Time now for the morning rush. A group of scientists at Los Alamos National Lab are using New Mexico resources to search and study pathogens. One of the major resources here in the state is the Museum of Southwest Biology, home to over 12,000 samples of tissue samples, all of which can be tested for pathogens. The National Science Foundation recently created a program giving LANL funding to study pandemics. Happening tonight, Albuquerque City Council is scheduled to vote on an ordinance that is aimed at protecting renters and landlords. The ordinance lays out some rules for landlords like disclosing all fees to tenants from the start, including application fees. Now, this also allows landlords to require renters to have renters insurance. Happening today, the House Education Committee will debate a bill aimed at codifying school-based health centers. Senate Bill 397 directs the Department of Health to provide funding and technical assistance to schools to create and operate school-based health centers. Zoe. It's going to be a warm, dry and windy one out there. There is a fire danger in effect for the far northeastern corner of New Mexico as temperatures warm into the 80s across the far southeast, upper 60s here in the Albuquerque metro. Do be aware it will be filled with a bit of cloud coverage, but that's not going to block any of the warmth that we're expecting today. New Mexicans wanting to buy a gun may soon have a longer waiting period. Senate Bill 427 would require gun buyers to wait two weeks before actually getting the gun. This would also make violating the waiting period result in a misdemeanor charge. Well, the bill is now heading on to the Senate Judiciary Committee. New training requirements could soon be in place for film employees. House Bill 338 would require anyone on a set that handles firearms, ammunition, or firearm components to complete a training program. The bill is set to be discussed in the House Commerce and Economic Development Committee this afternoon. Happening today, the City of Santa Fe is going to be hosting its annual COVID-19 Memorial Day. The event is a way to honor those who have died or been affected by COVID and to honor essential workers. This will include a moment of silence at noon, followed by a moment of cheer and appreciation for essential workers. Zoe. Even with a few clouds streaming in overhead today, it's going to be very dry at the surface. With that dry air mixing with windy conditions, there is a red flag warning in effect for the far northeast corner of New Mexico. The city is relaunching the city of Santa Fe, excuse me, is relaunching its Solarize Santa Fe program after a pilot program last year. Last year, the city of Santa Fe signed 39 contracts for solar, 10 of them for income qualifying households. The program is made possible through a partnership with Habitat for Humanity, Youth Works and the Coalition of Sustainable Communities New Mexico. This morning, pressure is mounting for Ukrainian troops as Russian forces advance into the eastern city of Bakhmut. That is where UK intelligence officials report Russian forces have advanced into the city's northern suburbs. In the last 36 hours, Ukraine has reportedly destroyed key bridges outside of the city, including its last remaining resupply route. Zoe. Now let's get, look, get a look at that morning drive. All roads are running very smoothly early this Monday morning. Nothing to worry about as trackers heading on I-25 South near the Big Eye, looking at a beautiful sunrise. Just a few other cars on the road early this Monday morning. New York officials, they are sharing a photo of a 14-foot python found on the side of the road. The Department of Environmental Conservation lined up the gigantic snake next to a truck just to show how big it is. The snake it was dead and it was found on Long Island last month. State officials believe that it was a pet and they are now looking for its owner who uh, discarded it. A reticulated python like this one is considered to be the longest snake in the world. Wow. Now time for the five facts. A patient at UNM Children's Hospital is one of just 1,000 kids in the world fighting a very rare disease. But the seven-year-old and his family are celebrating the small joys of life despite his condition. At only two years old, Rafe Hibben was diagnosed with a genetic mutation known as ICSEC2, which causes seizures and intellectual disabilities, among other physical impacts. The Hibbins have traveled to five different states for treatment and have been at the UNM Children's Hospital for the past 10 months. For now, the family focuses on the little things they can do to bring joy, like hanging decorations and having celebrations, creating comfort in difficult circumstances. And number four happening today, the House Education Committee is going to be debating a bill that's aimed at codifying school-based health centers. Senate Bill 397 directs the Department of Health to provide funding and technical assistance to schools to create and operate school-based health centers. Now, backers say that the bill will ensure the DOH continues to work with school districts to provide health services to children who need it. And at number three, we're looking at a lot warmer weather continuing into this afternoon. Temperatures across the far southeast will be in the 80s, upper 60s here in the metro, even 50s across southern Colorado. But do be aware those winds will be blowing pretty gusty, especially across the far northeast with a red flag warning in place. 
A group of scientists at Los Alamos National Lab, they are using New Mexico resources to search and study pathogens. That's like what we saw in the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the major resources here in the state is the Museum of Southwest Biology. That's home to over 12,000 tissue samples, all of which can be tested for pathogens. Now, it's still in the early stages right now. The National Science Foundation recently created a program that is giving Lanel funding to study the pandemics. They're also hoping to answer the question of what could have been done to prevent it earlier. Happening tonight, Albuquerque City Council is scheduled to vote on an ordinance aimed at protecting renters and landlords. The ordinance lays out some rules for landlords, like disclosing all fees to tenants from the start, including application fees. Because cities cannot enact rent control on a local level, some city leaders feel this is one way to help struggling renters making ends meet. The ordinance has protections for landlords as well. It allows them to require renters to have renters insurance, but only for an actual rental property, not the renters personal belongings.